Hey everybody, welcome to day 73 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. One of my favorite people ever in history is William Borden. He was a devoted Christian, a young Ivy League educated millionaire who in the very early 1900s gave away his fortune so that he could become a missionary in China. He actually died from meningitis at the age of 25 years old, and he was on the mission field when it happened. Um, His mother was talking to a friend of his once. It's a friend, but an older friend of William's, and uh, this older friend had actually been William's sailing instructor, you know, yachting from a, you know, wealthy family, and so he did yachting. And so his sailing instructor knew him real well, and Mrs. Borden was asking the sailing instructor what William was really like when he wasn't around her, because, you know, he's wonderful when he was around her. But, But her question was, is he really just as kind and considerate and good Uh, when he's away from me as he is when he's in my presence. And she said to the sailing instructor, after all, you should know because you've been around William when he could just be himself and let his guard down. And the sailing instructor said to Mrs. Borden, begging your pardon, ma'am, but William never lets his guard down. I love that. That is so great. William never lets his guard down. He is always good. He is always just as kind and considerate as he is around you. And I love that. Today we're going to read about Joshua again and his character and what a wonderful person he is. So looking at Joshua chapters 10 and 11 and beginning in chapter 10 verse 1 in the King James Version of the Bible with updated vocabulary, here we go. Now it came to pass when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities and because it was greater than Ai and all the men of it were mighty. Therefore, Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent to Hoham, king of Hebron, and Piram, king of Jermuth, and uh, Japhia, uh, king of Lachish, and unto Deber, king of Eglon, saying, Come up unto me and help me that we may strike Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their armies, and camped before Gibeon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua to the camp at Gilgal, saying, Do not slack your hand from your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand, and there shall not be a man of them that will stand before you. Joshua therefore came to them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord defeated them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goes up to Beth Horon and struck them to Azekah and on into Makeda. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the descent to Beth Horon that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah and they died. They were more who died from hailstones than those who the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still upon Gibeon, and you, moon, and the valley of Agilon. And the sun stood still, and the moon halted until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not haste to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord listened to the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him to the camp at Gilgal. 
But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Makeda. And it was told, Joshua saying, the five kings are found hidden in a cave at Makeda. And Joshua said, roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave and set men by it for to keep them. And stay there not, but pursue after your enemies and smite the hindmost of them. Allow them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God has delivered them into your hand. And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter till they were consumed, that the rest who remained of them entered into fenced cities. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Makeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings to me out of the cave. And they did so and brought forth those five kings to him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the captains of the men of war who went with him, Come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said to them, Do not be afraid nor discouraged, be strong and of good courage, for this the Lord shall do to all your enemies against whom you fight. And afterward Joshua struck them and slew them and hung them on five trees, and they were hanging upon the trees until evening. And it came to pass at the time of the going down of the sun that Joshua commanded that they took them down off the trees and cast them into the cave in which they had hid and laid great stones in the cave's mouth which remain to this very day. And that day Joshua took Machida and smote it with the edge of the sword, and the king of it he utterly destroyed them and all the souls that were therein. He let none remain, and he did to the king of Machida as he had done unto the king of Jericho. Then Joshua passed from Machida and all Israel with him unto Libna and fought against Libna. And the Lord delivered it also, and the king of it, into the hand of Israel, and he struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls that were in it, he let none remain in it, but did to the king of it as he did to the king of Jericho. And Joshua passed from Libna, and all Israel with him, to Lachish, and encamped against it, and fought against it. And the Lord delivered Lachish into the hand of Israel, which took it on the second day, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls that were in it, according to all that he had done to Libna. Then Horam, king of Gozer, came up to help Lachish, and Joshua smote him and his people until he had left none remaining. And from Lachish, Joshua passed to Eglon and all Israel with him, and they encamped against it and fought against it. And they took it on that day and struck it with the edge of the sword and all the souls that were in it. He utterly destroyed that day according to all that he had done to Lachish. And Joshua went up from Eglon and all Israel with him to Hebron, and they fought against it. And they took it and struck it with the edge of the sword and the king of it and all the cities of it and all the souls that were in it. He left none remaining according to all that he had done to Eglon, but he destroyed it utterly and all the souls that were in it. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him to Deber and fought against it. And he took it, and the king of it, and all the cities of it, and they struck them with the edge of the sword, and utterly destroyed all the souls that were in it. He left none remaining, as he did to Hebron, so he did to Deber, and to the king of it, as he had done also to Libna, and to her king. So Joshua struck down all the country of the hills, and of the south, and of the valley, and of the springs, and all their kings. He left none remaining, but utterly destroyed all that breathed, as the Lord God of Israel commanded. And Joshua struck them from Kadesh Barnea, even to Gaza, and all the country of Goshen, even to Gibeon. And all these kings and their land did Joshua take at one time, because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. And Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, unto the camp at Gilgal. Chapter 11. And it came to pass when Jabin, king of Hazor, had heard these things, that he sent Jobab, king of Maidan, and to the king of Shimron, and to the king of Akshaph, and to the kings that were on the north of the mountains of the plains south of Chinnereth, and in the valley, and in the borders of Dor on the west, and to the Canaanite, 
on the east and on the west, and to the Amorite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Jebusite in the mountains, and to the Hivite under Hermon in the land of Mizpah. And they went out, they and all their hosts with them, much people, even as the sand that is upon the seashore in multitude, with horses and chariots, very many. And when all these kings had met together, they came and pitched together at the waters of Miram to fight against Israel. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time I will deliver them up all slain before Israel. You shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua came and all the people of war with him against them by the waters of Miram suddenly, and they fell upon them. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who struck them down and chased them into the great Zidon and unto Mizphoth Maim, and into the valley of Mizpah eastward, and they smote them until they left them none remaining. And Joshua did to them as the Lord bade them. He hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots with fire. And Joshua at that time turned back and took Hazor and smote the king of it with the sword, for Hazor before time was the head of those kingdoms. And they struck all the souls that were in it with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There was not any left to breathe, and he burned Hazor with fire. And all the cities of those kings and all the kings of them Joshua took and smote them with the edge of the sword, and he utterly destroyed them as Moses the servant of the Lord commanded. But as for the cities that stood still in their strength, Israel burned none of these, save Hazor only, uh, that did Joshua burn. And all the spoil of these cities and the cattle and the children of Israel they took for a plunder to themselves, but every man they struck with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them, neither did they leave any to breathe. As the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So Joshua took all that land, the hills, and all the south country, and all the land of Goshen, and the valley, and the plain, and the mountain of Israel, and the valley of the same, even from the Mount Halak that goes up to Seir, even to Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon, under Mount Hermon, and all their kings he took, and struck them down and slew them. Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel except the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon, all others they took in battle. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly, and that they might have no favor, but that he might destroy them as the Lord commanded Moses. And at that time, Joshua came and cut off the Anakims from the mountains, from Anab and from the mountains of Judah, from all the mountains of Israel. Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. There were none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel. Only in Gaza, in Gath, in Ashdod, there remained some. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said to Moses, and Joshua gave it for an inheritance to Israel according to their divisions by their tribes, and the land rested from war. And that ends chapter 11 of the book of Joshua. Well, in chapter 10, we saw this catalog of five kings of the Amorites who were defeated. And remember that they were defeated with two miracles. First was the divine hailstones that fell on them. And remember, the scripture says more people died from the hailstones than from the swords of the Israelite army. And then we had the miracle of the sun standing still and also the moon standing still. And this is completely inexplicable scientifically. Like, how does the sun stand still? I mean, in reality, are we saying that the earth is going to quit spinning and then what would happen with gravity and centrifugal force? I mean, how's any of this going to work? And, and then the same thing with the moon standing still. The moon's not going to swing around the earth anymore. I mean, this is inexplicable. It's all miraculous. And it would take a handful of miracles to pull this off. And yet, you know, it is God. He, he can do it. In chapter 10, Verses 28 through 43, we see the catalog of cities that are falling in rapid succession. And so Joshua is moving quickly through the land and having victory on every side. 
In chapter 11, verse 15, we saw this wonderful description of Joshua, and we're going to say more about this when we come to our life lesson. But it said that Joshua left nothing undone of all that Moses commanded. And we just love that he he was so good. And whatever the Lord said, he did it, and he did it thoroughly. And, and he's such a great example for us. Uh, we have to say something about that again in a minute. But chapter 11, verse 23, we see that there is rest from war at this point. Uh, Joshua had so many victories that now they have a time of rest. And there have been no treaties This is, you know, utter defeat of the enemies. No treaties except, of course, for the Gibeonites. And so this is complete victory from start to finish. And that's what the Lord wishes for your life. Complete victory from start to finish. Now we have to say something about the Hittites here because we have time to, and I've been hoping to have time to to talk about the Hittites, uh, but there never is time. So today we have a little time. The Hittites. The Hittites are mentioned four times in the book of Joshua. Chapter 1, verse 4, chapter 3, verse 10, chapter 12, verse 8, and chapter 24, verse 11. Uh, 22 times altogether, the Hittites are mentioned in the Old Testament. 22 times. So it's, it's kind of a thing, right? And here's what you have to know. There was a time not so long ago when all the smart people said, oh, there's no such thing as Hittites. The Bible made that up. And it's just one of these campfire stories that the Old Testament made up. Well, that's not true. Uh, The early editions of the Encyclopedia Britannica had an article on the Hittites that said the, the Hittites are a mythological civilization mentioned only in the Bible. It's just all myth. In 1887, Claude Condor, who was an authority on Middle East exploration, he said, this Hittite empire was not, I think, forgotten, for it never existed. There were never Hittites. Who would believe this? So say the smart guys. M.G. Kyle reported that in 1904, one of the foremost archaeologists in Europe said to me, I do not believe there were ever such people as Hittites. So you see the pattern, right? Uh, But then a Syriologist, Archibald Sace, began to research, and he was a good researcher, and he began to uncover evidence of the Hittites not only existing, but of being a formidable power in the Middle East. He was once teased as he was doing his research. People said, oh, you're the inventor of the Hittites. There's no such thing as Hittites. You're the inventor of Hittites. And so he was teased. But then in 1888, he published a book called The Hittites, The Story of a Forgotten Empire. And when he published that story, uh, eventually people understood that there was indeed a Hittite empire. And that laid to rest all the questions about the Bible's uh, representation of the Hittites. Uh, Archaeology, truth, found in favor of the Bible. And once again, you know what I'm going to say, right? Never bet against the Bible. That's not going to work. Don't try doing that. So let's talk about now our great life lesson, and this again is Joshua. Joshua left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded. I love that. Um, He was following the Lord in every aspect of his life, and this is what we, we must all do. We have to follow the Lord in every aspect of our lives, not just some aspects, right? When it comes to character virtues, family ethics, work ethic, uh, study, service to the people around us, serving others, social skills, the disciplines that make it possible for us to have health and to prolong our lives as much as possible, everything. Joshua was a spiritual all-rounder. He was good at everything for the Lord. And that's what we want to be. The Lord wants us to be good at everything for him. And if we've been laying out in some matter, we should pick up that matter and do a good job for the Lord in that. You say, well, I've never been good with, you know, family. Well, get good at family. Leave nothing undone uh, of all that the Lord commands. Uh, You say, well, I've never been good at social skills. Get good at social skills. You want to be an all-rounder. You want to do everything you possibly can for the Lord. Joshua left nothing undone of all that the Lord wanted from him. And that has to be our life goal as well. So that should be our prayer, don't you think? That we would pick up right away anything that we have left lying, anything that we have left undone up till now, we'll pick it up right now. 
and let's commit that to the Lord. And I hope you'll pray in your heart as I pray out loud, okay? So let's do this together. Father God, I pray that if anything comes to mind uh, for anyone who's listening, that they have left undone any aspect of their lives that they have been slack concerning, that beginning right now today, we're going to pick that up and we're going to do a, a good job for you in this and leave nothing undone of everything that you wish for us. This is our prayer. This is our devotion, our commitment to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, okay. Thank you, as always, for being with me today, day 73 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast, and I sure hope I get to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.